Thank you so much for coming to Olvin's SCP Reading. If you enjoy the content, please leave a like below. It really does help. And leave me a comment. I actually have a question for you all this time. Do you like the light off? Do you like the light on? Or would you rather see a slideshow of images as I read off these SCP articles? Also, just a reminder, all of the SCP articles are on scpwiki.com and shared under Creative Commons license. I'm going to leave a little bit of information about that in the description below. Thank you so much. SCP-004 The 12 rusty keys in the door. When handling items, SCP-004 004-3 Proper procedure Vital. The items are not permitted to be moved off-site unless accompanied by two level 4 security personnel. Under no circumstances, any other component of SCP-004 be taken through SCP-004-1. The effects of doing so are as yet unknown. And the current cost of experimentation makes further research impractical. Should any of the objects contained within SCP-004-1 reach containment or the facility be breached, the keys must be brought inside and the door closed prior to activation of Site-62's on-site warhead. Unauthorized removal of keys from the testing area is grounds for immediate termination. Level 1 clearance is required for basic access to SCP-004-1. Level 4 clearance is required for use of SCP-004-2-2-13. Description SCP-004 consists of an old wooden barn door and a set of 12 rusted steel keys. The door itself is the entrance to an abandoned factory in Data Expunged. Chronological History 7 02 1949 a group of three juveniles trespassing on federal property near Redacted find the door. According to their testimony, they find a set of rusted keys in an old iron lockbox and determined what door the keys unlock. Juveniles are taken into custody after they contact Sheriff Redacted when one of their friends, SCP-004-01, goes missing. 07-03 1949. Local authorities find the severed right hand of Cass 01, 8 meters from SCP-004-1. 8 kilometers. Other parts of SCP Cass 01's body are found scattered as far as 32 kilometers from the factory. Under interrogation, the apprehended juveniles tell authorities that upon opening the door with one of the keys, SCP-0004-CAS-01 was torn into several pieces, each of which disappeared. At this point, the SCP Foundation takes over the investigation. 07-04-1949 SCP Agent Redacted obtains the keys from the local authorities to begin testing. The test shows that SCP-004-22 SCP-004-13 all fit into a single lock on the large barred door. Twelve Class D personnel are assigned to take test the effects of the door. Of the twelve test subjects, each trying a different key to enter the room, only two survive. Opening the door with any key except SCP-004-7 or SCP-004-12 Cause the test subjects to be torn apart in multiple directions. However, no dismembered parts were found until later. At time of writing, only two parts of each subject have been recovered, with the exception of the subject using SCP-004 redacted, whose pieces were scattered in close proximity. The other have, for all intents and purposes, vanished from existence. Of the two surviving subjects, only one, having used SCP-004-7, returned unharmed. The other came back in a near catatonic state, able only to remove himself from the room and then collapse on the floor, 
and had to be restrained to prevent him from gouging out his eyes. C. Epidemic A. Mental Health Effects of SCP-004 The subject using SCP-004-7 said that he had entered a large room, impossibly big for the size of the attached building. After his exit, SCP-004-1 was propped open in an iron squad. A level 3 personnel entered. The size of the room is impossible to measure, and the door frame and the individuals in the room are the only part of the room that can be felt or illuminated. 07-16-1949 The juvenile suspects and sheriff redacted are terminated. 08 02 1949. Redacted is declared a hazardous area due to unexploded ordnance and fenced fences erected in order to prevent civilian ingress. Tests to determine safety of exposure to environment behind SCP 004 1 begin. 1201 1950. First time anomalies resulting from exposure to SCP 004 are confirmed. Testing is suspended until further notice. 0702 19 Redacted. The unaccounted for remains of SCP 004 CAS 01 appear unexpectedly outside of SCP 004 1. Despite being killed decades before, the remains of CAS 01 are not decomposed in any manner and are still warm to the touch. Blood remains uncoagulated. The remains are remanded for testing. 0704 19 Redacted. The unaccounted for remains of one of the twelve original test subjects appear in similar manner to those of CAS-1. The remains have been designated SCP-004 CAS-02. Records suggest that both CAS-01 and CAS-02 used SCP-004-Redacted. 03 1999 The massive proliferation of nuclear weapons and World War III only redacted years away Construction has begun on a site inside SCP-004-1. The site is to stock supplies for redacted person dashes days. 04-21-1999 Redacted has ordered the site inside SCP-004-1 to be expanded to include emergency storage for all mobile SCP-00 redacted specimens and a redacted petabyte database for the storage of all SCP data. The facility is now referred to as Site-62. Perhaps that is what we are reading. 09-25-2000 Site-62 is operational. Labs and containment units are complete and contain the most dangerous specimens. Backup of SCP database has begun. 01-25-2001 Due to time anomalies, see space time anomalies below, all personnel working at Site-62 are now required to reside on-site permanently. Families of personnel are to be informed that loved ones perished in an industrial accident. Loaned bodies have been prepared for the funeral. 08-14-2003 Massive power outage across Northeast United States and throughout Canada. Due to the initial failure of multiple SCP generators, Site-62 was without power for 53 minutes. During those 53 minutes, those on site were completely without any source of light. They reported sensing creatures and people, although no abnormal entities could be seen or felt. The selected facility personnel were allowed to read Appendix A and said the creatures sensed were of humanoid size but otherwise similar to the massive green creatures described. Space-time anomalies. SCP-004 seems to propagate radiotemporal anomalies. Personnel leaving the facility report losing time. Those who have been on, in the site for weeks insist that they had only been in the facility for several days, and records of work composed and supplies consumed support their claims. Other temporal anomalies involve SCP-004-2 through 13, especially the reappearance of CAS-01 and CAS-02 exactly redacted years 
before using SCP-004 Redacted. Redacted has been assigned to investigate all aspects of these time anomalies. Spatial anomalies include the impossibly large dimensions of the area opened by SCP-004-7. Similarly, the 2003 blackout incident suggests that there are, exists an alternate plane of existence within the same space that Site-62 occupies. Additional notes. Testing on SCP-004 reveals that 10 of the keys open SCP-004-1 on a dimension where the laws of physics and topology are significantly different than those of our home dimension. Test subjects meeting these hostile conditions are torn apart, their body parts deposited in various locations, only three of which have been verified to be on Earth. Material deposited at two of these points appears immediately. Material deposited at the third appears exactly redacted years into the future. The other seven locations are currently unknown. Current testing focuses on two avenues of research. The first is finding ways to survive SCP-004's hostile topologies. Second, data expunge suggests that SCP-004-2-13 may open other doors than SCP-004-1. All Class D personnel using SCP-004-12 return in a catatonic state, unable to speak. Some may have had enough energy left to try to claw out their eyes. Of the 16 subjects, only 4 has survived. Only one has regained speech following long-term psychotherapy. He was able to tell the psychiatrist that he saw a massive green creature so large that much of its body extended beyond his field of view. He reported innate fear and sudden recognition as if it were something buried deep in his primal fears and forced implantation of incomprehensible memories. Subject displays acute, intergrade, and retrograde amnesia. Appendix B. Additional information. Item number SCP-004-14. Date of discovery 0902-1950. Origin of object. Object was discovered elsewhere in the factory area in the previously undiscovered manager's office. Description. Object appears as a large, unvarnished wooden box. The box may be unlocked by the safe key SCP-004-7 as well as five of the unsafe keys. Upon unlocking SCP-00-14 with SCP-004-7, the box opens automatically on hinges. The volume of the space inside is precisely five times greater than the outer dimensions imply. Items placed within while the lid remains open do not affect the weight or any of the other properties of the box. When the lid is closed and locked, however, all items inside vanish irretrievably. Personnel locked inside the box are also retrievable. irretrievable. Although, losing personnel in this fashion appears to affect significantly the dreams experienced by Data Expunged. SCP-006 The Fountain of Youth Under direct orders of the Founder, access is limited to those with Overseer Clearance. Item Number SCP-006 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures Whereas the nature of SCP-006 does not warrant any extensive containment, a certain level of secrecy is necessary regarding the object's existence and properties for obvious reasons. Following procedures are required not for personal safety, but to deny or hide knowledge of SCP-006 effects from the personnel who interact with it. Number 1. All personnel interacting with SCP-006 in any physical way are required to wear modified class 6 BNC suits. Before personnel are allowed to perform procedures, they must be briefed with material SCP 006 B or 006 C. SCP 006 A briefing is the correct one and is restricted to only those with O5 clearance. To ensure personnel are wearing suits properly, they are to be submerged into a pool of water. Any air bubbles spotted signify a leak in the suit. Number 2. Procedures with SCP-006 are to be carried out under extreme surveillance. In a case of contact with SCP-006, the commander in charge will announce Procedure 006-XI-12, which the personnel have been briefed to believe to mean high toxicity is present 
and they must evacuate. Number three, any procedure in which a liquid is acquired from 006 must be approved by three O5 level personnel. Liquid is to be transferred in a quad sealant container under armed guard. Number four, if at any time personnel come into contact with SCP-006 or liquid from SCP-006, they are to be confined and terminated after sufficient studies are done. Due to the nature of SCP-006, the most effective termination method is incineration. Description SCP-006 is a very small spring located 60 kilometers west of Astrakhan. Foundation Command was aware of its existence since the 19th century, but were unable to secure it until 1991 due to political reasons. On the spot of the spring, a chemical factory has been constructed as a disguise, with the majority of laborers under Foundation and or Russian control. The liquid emitted from the spring has been chemically identified as simple material water in 19... simple mineral water in 1902, but has the unusual property of health. Ingesting the liquid produces the following properties in human beings. The ability to regenerate DNA damaged by sufficient duplication. Heightened excitement of cellular duplication. Vastly improved abilities in the repair of damaged tissue. And a frightening increase in the effectiveness of the human immune system. Upon testing the liquid on animal subjects, hostile bacterial and viral agents are destroyed immediately. Many reptiles and birds were unaffected, while higher primates experienced the same benefits as humans. Item number SCP-007 Abdominal Planet Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-007 is to be contained in a sealed room measuring 10 meters on each side. The room is to be furnished comfortably as a living area, along with whatever items are requested by Redacted. Hereafter, referred to as subject. Given that providing subject with requested at given that providing subject with requested items would not compromise security. Subject is not allowed to leave the room and is to be detained with force if necessary. Description SCP-007 is located within a cavity in the abdomen of subject. Subject is a Caucasian male, physically approximately 25 years of age. Subject claims to be 28 and 176 centimeters in height. Most of subject's abdomen, muscles, skin, and organs absent, though subject does not appear to suffer because of this. Instead of normal flesh, a, a sphere composed of soil and water is present, though it does not actually come into contact with subject's body at any point. The sphere appears to be, in most respects, a miniature near-duplicate of the Earth, approximately 60 centimeters in diameter, although continental alignment is not consistent with that of any alignment known in Earth's history. The sphere has its own weather patterns and negligible gravitational pull, in addition to microscopic organisms somewhat resembling those of modern day Earth inhabiting. Two intelligent species have been observed, though contact or communication with either has yet to been made. Technology levels of observed species must be checked at least once a week, and, as of redacted, are approximately equal to that of 15th century Earth. Subject claims to be named redacted, but no records of such a person can be found. Subject does not require food or water, and while he has been observed consuming both, what happens to such substances after being swallowed is unknown. Subject is intelligent. IQ has been measured at 128. And amicable in regards to the planet in whose abdomen is a minor curiosity about his body. The subject seems to experience no stress about his unusual condition. In questions about planet's origins, the subject replies, I just woke up one day and there it was. I don't even have any idea how I got there. The subject has provided a social security number and a driver's license and requested that they be checked against known records. When checked, it was discovered that neither had yet been allocated. Doctor Redacted has a weekly chess game with Subject, during which Subject's mental health is evaluated. Doctor Redacted reports that Subject does not seem to mind the restricted living environment 
and has yet to attempt to escape or show signs of violence or mental illness, though he has repeatedly requested a computer with an internet connection. It is recommended that this not be provided as it may be used to compromise security. Item number SCP-008 Zombie Plague Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-008 samples have been deemed Class 5 Extreme Biological Hazards and all related protocols apply. Incineration and irradiation measures will be deployed in the event of political or military action, which may result in the facility being dismantled. A power failure or zero communications from operatives or outside channels during any given eight hour period. Quarantine period for op the quarantine period for operatives leaving the facility is four months. If a breach has occurred, incineration and irradiation measures shall be deployed. It should be the policy of all GG sites to not prepare an evacuation measure. Description SCP-008 is a complex prion, samples of which are stored in each of the known G2 sites. Research into SCP-008 is highly classified and primarily aimed at preventing research which may, which may lead to the synthesis of SCP-008 in the distant future. Bits of the SCP-008 prion include 100% infectiousness, 100% lethality, transmission through exposed mucous membranes and all bodily fluids, not airborne or waterborne. Symptoms of infection with SCP-008 manifest in no more than 3 hours after exposure and include flu-like symptoms with high fever plus severe dementia in later stages. Coma onset approximately 20 hours after first symptoms appear and at 12 hours after noticeable dementia. Coma onset will be considered onset of death. A period of sporadic cellular neurosis occurs which comes to resemble gangrene. Surviving tissue assumes its original function and is highly resilient. Red blood cells greatly increase Oxygen storage capacity, resulting in slower blood flow and increased muscle endurance and strength. Nervous and muscular systems are unaffected by total organ failure for several hours. Metabolism may decrease to extremely low levels, allowing subjects to survive for over 10 years without nutrition. High blood viscosity results in neg negligible blood flow from gunshot, puncture, and slashing injuries. Conditioned behavior, border controls, and instinctive behavioral mechanisms are damaged, and cognitive abilities are severely erratic and damaged. Animals experience excessive brain neurosis and are inactive. Subject can adapt to its damaged nervous system, but it is limited to basic physical activities, including standing up, balancing on two legs, walking, biting, grabbing, and clawing. Subject will energetically move towards signs, sights, and smells it associates with living humans. Subject will attempt to ingest living humans if physical contact is made. Neutralizing fully infected subjects requires significant cranial trauma. There is strong evidence to suggest SCP-008 itself did not form naturally on Earth, since variants of similar capacity would have dispatched most of the ecosystem. In 1959, a short collaborative effort with the USSR to locate G2 sites and eliminate SCP-008 was negotiated following their discovery. The status of SCP-008 in Russia custody since collaboration ended is unknown. Adenium 008-1 SCP-500 has been found to be able to completely cure SCP-008 even in the advanced stages of the disease. Item number SCP-010 Colors of Control Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures The objects compromising SCP-010 are to be kept in numbered locked boxes in a high security facility. They are not to be worn except by test subjects. SCP-010 Zero one zero are only to be removed from storage for testing. Description: 
SCP-010 consists of a series of six apparently identical cast iron collars with numbered metal tags and one remote control. The control is SCP-010-1. The collars are SCP-010-2 through 010-7. The collars contain intricate electronical components and are powered by small 100 volt batteries. These batteries are rechargeable. The remote is a heavy black box resembling an old style handheld radio transmitter receiver with a primitive blue white cat hole D ray screen and a series of more than a hundred unlabeled buttons as well as a frequency tuner. Through trial and error, the frequencies of all six currently found colors have been discovered. A label in Russia a label in Russian is stamped into the metal along with a logo consisting of a worker building a pyramid. No official Russian corporation or government agency uses this logo or matches the words stamped into the metal. Placing the color around the neck of a person and securing it allows one to control their every movement with a remote. Placing the color around the neck of a person and securing it allows one to control their every movement with the remote. It is also capable of producing an adrenal response and activating or deactivating the sympathetic nervous system. The most abnormal feature of the collars is the effect they have on the body morphology. They allow the user of the remote to reconfigure the shape of the victim to an extent that is apparently only limited by the knowledge of the programming language of the remote. Anidium 010-1 History. SCP-010 was discovered in the basement of a lone man in the Midwestern United States after a local disappearance was connected to it. When the police raided the man's house, they found SCP-010 as well as several dead bodies. One of the bodies was identified to be the man. The others were several other missing persons. The cause of death seemed to be mass suicide, however, there were signs of significant struggle first. Adenium 010-2 Disassemble Experiment Test number 1 SCP-010-2 Take it apart piecewise Parts labeled and several photographs taken Then re reassembled Result At the reassembly 010-2 continues to function Test 2. SCP-010-8 constructed identically to 010-2, but with the closest approximations available to the unreplaceable components. Result. SCP-010-8 SCP fails to function. Test 3. Unreplaceable components from SCP-010-2 placed into proper locations on 0-2. On 010-8, result, SCP-010-2 ceases functioning with the removal of components. 010-8 begins functioning. Test number 4. Components return to SCP-010-2. Replaceable components in 010-2 replace randomly with replicas. Result. 010-2 begins functioning with return of components. Changing replaceable components to replicas does not significantly reduce functionality. Replacement of a damaged transistor decreased time from transmission to effect of SCP-010-2 response to commands entered in the remote by 12%. Adenium 010-3 SCP-010 has been demonstrated to work more effectively in, created, in creating unskilled labor than for any other task. The logo is apt. Dr. Redacted. Thank you all so very much for coming by. It means the world to me that you um, stuck around and watched. I do hope that it helped you relax. If you like the content, please leave me a like and subscribe. Have a wonderful evening.